Welcome back to the channel. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome. Got the checkbook box out here, the old 25. So, not long at all after I replaced the firing pin spring on the gun, as displayed in part two video, I had another malfunction. And so, like I said before, I really like the idea of this gun and um, I really would like for this weapon to, to work. I, I think it's a neat little gun and I like it a lot. And it's a blast to shoot. No pun intended, it's a lot of fun to shoot. So um, let's uh, walk through what happened and we'll go through the solution. Back at the range with the 25. This is the second trip I made to test fire the weapon since I put a new firing pin spring in the gun. Uh, the first time I took it, I only put maybe 10 rounds to it, just to make sure it would work. This time, I pulled the trigger, nothing happened. I thought it might have been a dud round, so I cycled a few through it. I cycled it a couple times. I forcefully pulled the slide back to make sure that I went all the way, and it chambered the round properly. Pulled the trigger, and nothing happened. It was just a click. It was an audible click. Obviously, the sear was releasing the firing pin, and the pressure of the spring was moving the action. So I went ahead and did a quick field strip right there on the bench to make sure that I had assembled everything properly, that all the parts were in correctly, and to make sure that everything I had done previously had been just the way that it was supposed to be assembled. Turns out, so I pulled the, there's a the slide spring. I pulled that out, take a look at it. Just make sure that that didn't need to be replaced too. I pulled the uh, new spring out there that I replaced and the firing pin and looky there, it is broke. So the tip of the, f the tip of the firing pin should be just maybe a half an inch, a quarter of an inch off of the firing pin itself and it strikes the primer, which makes the round go off. So I was very disappointed to see that. So back to numeric I went, see if I could find that part and get that replaced. I did disable the audio on this part of the range. The only thing you'd hear is outside gunfire and the very muted clicks of the firing mechanism as I pulled the trigger. So I wanted to narrate this a little bit. Here is the old firing pin with the clean break, as you can see there, and steel or whatever metal this is made out of. Here's the new one, machined in a darker colored metal. Uh, the cuts are pretty similar, so let's see how it fits. All right, so I got it in there. It slides back and forth mostly freely it feels like it catches on the side or maybe there's a microscopic burr or something. I'm sure it's more microscopic, but I could feel just a little bit of tension there as I move it back and forth, just a little bit of friction. So I may take some grease from the Grand that I use on the Grand uh, and just wipe down the, uh, the firing pin just to make sure that it moves freely my next trip to the range. Atlantic Products, in my conversation with him, it's not a good idea to die, dry fire this weapon. It, I do it with my Glock all the time, and of course my revolvers, just for practice and point of aim and all that. For this gun, you're not going to be aiming particularly. Yeah, it does have a little bitty front sight there and a little tiny notch for the rear sight, but you're not going to be making any aimed shots. I would consider reasonable at any sort of distance. So I'm going to go with that advice. That's probably going to cause some controversy in my comments. I know that there's a lot of opinions one way and another about dry firing a pistol. So, and I'm sure everybody has their own opinion about it, but for this gun, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm not going to dry fire this weapon anymore. And that seemed to be his belief is that dry firing is what 
may have put a little too much pressure on this piece here. Man, a clean break though on that on the original firing pin. So, all right. So uh, I'll put a little grease on this thing, and we will take it out to the range next time and see how she does. Okay, we're back at the range. I'm going to have to hold the camera and prop it up against something. I forgot the tripod and the microphone. I've got the 25 here. We're going to put a few rounds to the 25. It's very hard to find. So I've got the old trusty Remingtons. I've only got a few left. Those are our misfires from when the spring went. I've got a few left here, and I've got a few older cartridges of uh, Winchester. Products. We're going to try that as well. So... Sidekick's here helping me. He's going to help film a little bit. This is his first time in the range, so he's going to watch and learn. So let's get uh, loaded up here and let's see what happens. How do we do? Yeah, not too bad. This target is about 10 mile, uh, 10 yards away from the bench. So obviously, with no, this is not a gun that's designed for accuracy. But I am pleased that the replacement parts actually worked on it. So this was our first round with the Remington, generally aiming at the bottom left. This centerpiece here was the uh, Winchester. Got a stray one up here. All the, I was either aiming at one of two of these. 